Welcome back. My final tipping point tonight, if the Black Lives Matter movement cares about the well-being of black lives, why aren't they talking about the fact that young black men are astronomically more likely to commit crimes than their white counterparts? I said this on Wednesday, and I want to say it again now. This isn't something we should accept as a society, but it isn't something we can deny from a factual standpoint either. If we look at the FBI statistics, we can see for ourselves that in 2014, blacks committed 5,173 homicides that year, while whites committed 4,367. If the Black Lives Matter movement cares about the well-being of black lives, that's the question they would ask. Why? Why is that statistic disproportional to the population of black people in our country? What is it about the experience of young black men that propels so many into a life of crime? And how can we best equip them for better lives? Well, we can start by holding young black men to higher standards, like I said earlier in the week, teaching family values, pulling off the pedestal, drugs, thugs, and money, and raising to the pedestal the dignity of work. Hustling is already respected in the black community, so opportunity is needed so ingenuity can flourish. Respecting black men like Dr. Ben Carson and Bishop E.W. Jackson should be the fashion, not celebrity worship of rappers like Jay-Z and Tupac, race baiters like Reverend Al Sharpton and Reverend Jesse Jackson, or professional athletes who cheat on their wives. We can start by empowering young black women to achieve, not remain stuck in a cycle of poverty. Empower young black women to keep their children settled with one man. Reject the notion that abortion is the answer. Respect for black women like Condoleezza Rice, Stacey Dash, Star Parker, and Mia Love should be the fashion, instead of hero worship of Beyonce and Rihanna who glorify the cycle of abuse and infidelity. We're told the cycle of poverty and crime is white people's fault, but where does the blame end? When are we going to empower the individual, encourage entrepreneurship and education, put an end to the attitude of victimhood, and get the government out of the way? When we do that, make no mistake, the disproportionate statistics of crime and violence and poverty will begin to change. And that's my final point. Reach me on Twitter at Liz underscore Wheeler. And if you liked the show, please send me an email at oann.com contact. And be sure to catch Tipping Point again tomorrow at 10 p.m. Eastern. And have a good night.